um, basically excluded from the market. A problem with serious implications if it's not addressed. We need to find some innovative solutions to that because this problem, we're, we're just on the front end of this. This isn't going to go away anytime soon. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News. Now, we've heard the same issues from frustrated home buyers here in western Montana, which is why we pulled housing price data for Missoula and Flathead counties. In 2018, the median price of a home, according to the Missoula Organization of Realtors, was just over $293,000. Data from the Northwest Montana Association of Realtors shows in the Flathead that same year, a home's median price was $310,000. So let's jump ahead five years to 2022. Missoula County's median home price is $530,000. In the Flathead, it's $605,000, both showing price growth of more than $200,000. On the other hand, this spring is expected to be a little bit easier if you're looking to buy a home. Redfin data shows homes are staying on the market about three weeks longer than this time last year, which means bidding wars and waiving inspection should be less common. Still, home prices are up 4% from last year and mortgage rates are almost double. Well, we had a gorgeous morning in western Montana. Brian caught this photo just around Sealy Lake. You can see some of the pretty colors out there, but it was a cold one too. We had some frigid temperatures around Georgetown Lake, negative 23, Sealy Lake around negative 8 degrees. Brian, I hope you were warm enough out there. We had some temperatures on the plus side, Frenchtown and Ronan. We're going to see another cold morning tomorrow when the temperatures Daytime will stay in those upper 30s as well, but we've got some changes coming next week. I'll walk you through them in the full forecast. Some good news for the University of Montana. Enrollment is up, according to UM, seeing a 3.1% growth from spring of last year to the spring of this year. UM is reporting 10,109 students in its official spring census count for this year, compared to 9,805 last spring. President Seth Bodner says it's the fourth consecutive year of growth at UM, but the largest growth from year to year came at Missoula College. 280 additional early admit and dual enrollment students helped increase the overall growth at the two-year college by 19%. To read the full report, Go to kpax.com. Retail sales jumped from December to January. The 3% increase is the biggest monthly rise in about two years, and that's after all the holiday shopping was over. The job market is strong too, as January's unemployment rate hit a 53-year low. Economists say when people have job security, they tend to spend more. Not hard to believe at all that Valentine's Day is one of the busiest for flower shops, but what may be hard to believe is just how much work in advance those florists have to do just for that one big day in February. MTN's Claire Peterson went behind the scenes at one Missoula shop to see what it takes for those roses to reach their destination. As you can see behind me, the folks here at Bitterroot Flower Shop are hard at work making sure that Missoula has flowers for this Valentine's Day. I would say for me, probably two months I've been preparing. Front of house at Bitterroot Flower Shop was running smoothly with extra registers for folks to pick up their flowers. But it's the back where petals were on the ground and folks were running around. So this is where the magic happens. <laughs> so we have our professional designers and what they're currently doing is making design flower arrangements. It's definitely a, a job that there's a skill involved and so all of these folks have had a lot of training and they're really competent and good at what they do. The designers don't work alone and they aren't the first step. Flowers come in boxes and are trimmed and cut. Then stored in the freezer for future bouquets. So, I mean, we try to get them as close to home as possible, you know, so mm -hmm. some come Cold weather means flowers are hard to grow, so a lot of flowers this time of the year are outsourced to southern continents or Hawaii. It's always risky, like this time of year, I mean, because the weather. Some of them came in frozen, and then that affects like the farm and the distributor and us. The shop had ten times as many orders as they usually do, so there were plenty of flowers to use. I think we're at 6,000 colored roses and 6,000 red, maybe. Wow. So, like, so, so many. 
The finished bouquets were then sorted, loaded in cars, and delivered. Some of the drivers are like, gosh, it's so rewarding, you know, just like have, handing people beautiful things all day long and having them be like, thank you so much, wow, you know. The floral designers work long hours for several weeks around holidays, but they still find a way to love what they do. Uh, so this is the eighth day I've worked in a row. We came in at 6 this morning. We were here till 7.30 last night, 7 mm -hmm. about. But Valentine's Day is just like, it's really exciting because a lot of people who don't normally come into the shop or don't normally buy flowers are here. So you kind of are like getting a little bit of everybody from around town. I went back Wednesday after the storm settled, but the employees were still feeling a little bit burned out. Everybody is so tired. It's just been a bunch of really long days trying to get everything ready and then just uh, the final push yesterday of like getting all the freshest flowers in vases and out the door and um, yeah. Still, the shop was back to normal with designers working on new bouquets. Yeah, we're just back to like birthdays and funerals and thinking of yous, you know, <laughs> the yeah. everyday arrangements, yeah. In Missoula, Claire Peterson, MTN News. We're back to the legislature after the break, this time talking about issues with a CDL. And later, Columbia Falls boys wrestling one state. We're going to hear from the winners. That's ahead here on KPEX. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 530 News. Earlier this month, the Montana Senate voted down a bill that would have revised the state's commercial driver's licensing laws to comply with new federal requirements. Now leaders are looking at what the consequences could be if that change isn't made. MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Imbarian looks at the issue. Senate Bill 47 would have made relatively small changes to Montana's laws on commercial driver's licenses. But state administrators say if it fails to pass by the end of the legislative session, it could have far-reaching impacts. The bill, sponsored by Republican Senator Teresa Manzella of Hamilton, would have directed the State Motor Vehicle Division to check whether an applicant seeking their first CDL has completed a federally required entry-level driver training before giving them a test. State leaders say most states have already implemented this change, and if Montana doesn't follow suit, the federal government has threatened they could withhold millions of dollars in highway funding or decertify the state CDL program. If Montana's CDL program is decertified, the MVD would be prohibited from issuing new CDLs, which is approximately 1,200 per year, or renewing or upgrading current CDLs. The Senate rejected SB 47 23 to 27 and voted down an attempt to revive it several days later. Opponents said entry-level training is a big hurdle in cost and in time for would-be commercial drivers, especially in rural Montana, and there's already enough challenges in finding workers. So the threat is that the feds are going to decertify us. Well, the feds threaten to decertify and withhold funding all the time. Supporters said the requirements already exist in federal law, and there are options for addressing the training costs. Great Falls College MSU recently began a CDL training program that works in conjunction with employers. Industry came to us and, and told us um, you know, about this uh, in incredible need that's out there for commercial drivers uh, and, and asked us to respond to that. While they're certified as an entry-level program, leaders are concerned about the impact on drivers who go through their training if Montana's CDL system is decertified. That's the potential consequence that's out there. Even if you've gone through a program that is ELDT um, certified in the state of Montana, the federal government could still decertify your license. Senate Bill 47 was brought at the request of the Montana Department of Transportation. The Montana Department of Justice, which oversees the Motor Vehicle Division, didn't take a position for or against the bill. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. We've got more clear weather, blue skies in the forecast for the next couple of days, but things are changing, so I've got all the details you need to plan for the weekend coming up. Danny Hallow is joining us now. Kind of a quiet day, especially after yesterday. Yes, it's been kind of a nicer day, but we did have some really cold temperatures this morning. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to keep staying on the warmer side, and we've got some blue sky. Good details coming up right now. Well, yes, it's been kind of a chillier morning for us to earlier today, but 
Look how nice it's been. Josh took this photo of some clear blue sky. This is right around Upper Whitefish Lake. You can see, yeah, a good bit of snow out there, but it's been so nice out in Big Sky Country. It's nice to see that blue sky once in a while. And you know what? We're going to see more of it in the coming days. So in Missoula, what 6 p.m. looks like right now, still a little bit dark out there. But in about two weeks, 6.20 p.m. is when the sun should be setting. It's going to look a little bit lighter out there. And then in a month, the sun should set at 7.40 p.m. And it'll look nice and probably blue sky for us, depending on how the weather's rolling, but a lot lighter out there. And we're going to continue to see sort of this light, sort of calm weather for us, at least for the next two days or so. Come the weekend, by Saturday, Sunday, depending on where you are, we could see more of an active wet weather pattern that's going to move in. And then next week, sort of in the middle of the week, it's looking like maybe Wednesday right now. The timing's still a little bit uncertain, but we could see an Arctic front move in, change those temperatures. Let me show you what that would look like. We're still in those upper 30s for a good portion of the next week here, almost getting close to about 40 in some areas. This is for Missoula here. Remember our normals right around 31, 32 for this time of year. So it's looking like we'll stay in this trend even when the wet weather comes Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But Tuesday into Wednesday, you see that big drop. That's when we could potentially see that Arctic front roll in. Here's why that could happen. Right now we've got high pressure building a nice ridge there. It's not going to last long, but this is what's giving us that dry sort of clearer weather. Now it's going to kind of dissipate, move away from us, and you're going to start to see this really deep low pressure system off the Pacific. Now this is going to split a little bit, and we're going to get some cold kind of wet weather coming in from British Columbia there. This is Saturday, so we could maybe see that high pressure breakdown Saturday, give us just a little bit of wet weather out there. But this low is eventually going to kind of move this way. The split part of it will continue to move this way as well. And that means that really Sunday throughout next week, we don't know how long exactly yet, but it looks like we're going to have some wet weather. So you can see it right here on the seven day forecast. For now, we've got the clearer weather, at least through tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. We're looking at some nicer weather. The clouds will start to build Friday into Saturday, but you can see how the temperatures are staying on the warmer side. Those overnight lows a little bit cool still. We've had some cold mornings lately. They're going to kind of stay cold, at least for tomorrow morning. Our overnight lows are looking in the teens, some single digits in some areas, but that'll start to warm up in the coming days. In Kalispell, you're looking about 36 degrees tomorrow. Still another cold morning for you, and you've got some cloudiness Friday that's going to come in. So you really do get one good day of some more sunshine out there before that snow returns. Your chance for snow on Saturday has upped itself just a little bit to about 30%. Sunday is higher and then Monday it's even higher. It's really looking like the beginning of Sunday next week through about Wednesday, maybe Thursday. That snow's really wanting to stick around for a good long time. In Hamilton tomorrow, 38 degrees. Some really good sunshine for you before the clouds build in. And then it's looking like you're warm enough on Sunday. You might see that rain snow mix before it all turns to snow. For the first time in more than 30 years, Columbia Falls Boys Wrestling earned a state title. We'll take a look at the championship team coming up.